In this video, we're going to see how to find an object that the user picked in an autocomplete text view. The reason we want to do this is that we have a one-to-many relationship between plants and specimens. Here on Plant Places, we see the Eastern Redbud, a plant that I use quite a bit in examples. And if you look up above, you'll see there's a plant ID of 83. You'll also see that plant ID in the JSON stream that we're consuming to populate this autocomplete text view here. The trick is at the moment, we're only retrieving the plant name because we're just getting the text that is in that autocomplete text view. But one nice thing about Android is that we don't necessarily have to put text into an autocomplete text view. We can put an object into an autocomplete text view, and then we can retrieve that object when the user selects that object. Let's see how to do this. So I'm going to go to the on activity created and you see ACT plant name is the name of that autocomplete text view where the user can type a plant. So I'm simply going to go down here and say ACT plant name dot set on item click listener. And we'll choose the Lambda expression here. Now this is an interesting Lambda because we've used a lot of single parameter Lambdas. This Lambda actually has four parameters parent, view, position, and ID, and then we see the separator between the arguments and the logic that we're going to apply. Or if it were a function, we would simply call this the function body. So what we need is the parent and the uh, position. The position represents the position that the user selected, for lack of a better word. So first of all, let's say parent.getItem at position. And you see that that returns an any, so it could be any object. Any is kind of like java.lang.object in, in traditional Java. We need to pass in the position, and guess what? The position is provided to us as well as the parent if you take a look at our lambda arguments. So position, just like so. Now we can save this into a variable. Let's save our selected plant. But the trick is if we say selected plant dot plant ID, uh, we don't get anything because it doesn't know what data type selected plant is. So we have to do kind of like a cast in Kotlin. For a cast in Kotlin, we use the as keyword and then we say what we want to cast it to and we'll say plant. Now normally I would, well, let's go ahead and import. Okay, there we go. And you see as soon as I import, now our red line on line 59 goes away. Now a lot of times it's a good idea to check for type safety first. But if we look up above, we see that we are populating this autocomplete with a collection of plants. And that collection of plants is something that we get from our view model and it's live data that we're observing on. And because I wrote that, I'm absolutely certain that I'm putting plant objects in there. So I'm going to skip the type check for the moment. So you see that we get the plant object and we also get the plant ID. Now let's store this plant ID into an attribute that we can use later when we're saving our specimen. So I'll we'll say underscore plant ID equals plant ID, just like so. You see that red line's because I've not declared it yet. Let's go up just a little bit and say private var underscore plant ID. And then we'll just initialize it to zero. That way we don't have to worry about type. And we have a default value there as well. I scroll back down and take a look. Underscore plant ID is now populated. Let's go down to our specimen where we're saving the specimen. And remember we have the scope function here, apply. What that means is assume that all of the variables that I'm using here are applied to this specimen here, not necessarily the enclosing class main fragment. We'll say plant ID, and it, again, just pulling that from the specimen, equals underscore plant ID. That's it, let's see how it works. I have the emulator up and a few breakpoints set. So let's go with our old friend, the Eastern Redbud. We see, there we go. I anticipate this will have an ID of 83 like I just showed you on the Plant Places website. As soon as I click, the breakpoint hits. I choose F8 and let's look at selected plant. You see, it's not just the string Eastern Redbud and that's very important. When I expand on it, you see we have a whole lot more information. Eastern Redbud, Circus Canadensis, and sure enough, Plant ID 83. That's the value of object-oriented programming is we're not just putting strings into things that the user can see, but we're putting objects into things that the user can see. And then the Android operating system is invoking the two string on that object, and that's what is presented to the user. So under the covers, we still have objects. And you see here plant ID 83, so we should associate 
83 with our private variable, plant ID, and sure enough, we do. Now, description, a beautiful tree with pinkish purple flowers, edible flowers at that. Now I choose save. We'll go ahead and walk through this where we populate the specimen. So let's see what our specimen looks like. And sure enough, we see plant ID 83. We press F7 and that's going to take us into our module where we're storing to Firebase. If I take a look at Firebase, we see that a new specimen has been created, a beautiful tree with purple, pink, edible flowers, eastern redbud, and a brand new specimen ID. I've removed breakpoints so that we can create another, so let's start by changing it to something else. I'll just pick something at random, northern wormwood in this case, and let's go back and change it again to eastern redbud. And let's change the description because what I want to show you here is that we can have two different specimens that are associated to the same plant ID. So we'll call this one a tree living by the creek. By the way, Eastern Redbud is one of my absolute favorite trees, especially for the greater Cincinnati area. Edible flowers uh, requires little to no fertilizer and it's a native tree as well. And beautiful broom, blooms right around February, March. So let me hit save and we'll watch Firebase update. You see we have our new item again pretty fast because that's going from my local computer to Firebase somewhere in the uh, Google Cloud. And what we see here is we have our Eastern Redbud with ID 83. We go to our other Eastern Redbud and there again there's plant ID 83. So these both have what we would call a foreign key in the relational database days back to the same plant so that we can look through our specimens and we can see every one that is an Eastern Redbud. So that's all there is to it. I hope the video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.